Hey everybody, it's Sandra here. Thank you for joining me again today. Um, today is July 13th and uh, I'm now officially 188 hours into my uh, doctor monitored extended water fast and this is day 8 and yesterday my weight was 112 even and today it is 111.2. My blood pressure today was 104 over 70 and my pulse, keep in mind I have bradycardia and my pulse is normally 45 and today it was 51. Uh, I'm really, really super de duper tired, but other than that, I'm doing fine. I'm not dizzy. I don't feel nauseated. I don't want to vomit or anything like that. I'm just really, really tired. I'm still not sleeping at night. Dr. Joanna said that she had the same issue during her first uh, extended water fast and not to worry about it. She was very happy this morning, by the way, with my stats. Very happy. Big smile on her face. Um, but I am making up for my lack of sleep during the daytime. Today I slept for more than two hours uh, when my roommates were watching Life of Pi in Spanish. I, I had already decided I was going to sleep, so I slept through the movie. They watched like half of it, um, and uh, they're going to finish the rest of it tomorrow, and I'll probably uh, watch that with them tomorrow. Um, also, Dr. Joanna said that at night is when our bodies are going through the main detoxification process and it's like repaving neural pathways, stripping down and rebuilding cells, etc. And sometimes that activity is enough to keep us awake. Um, so that could explain my inability to sleep these last two nights. Major detox and rebuilding taking place. Also, she said that it could be because I'm on my phone a lot, which is definitely true and that could be stimulating me too much. Maybe I could try staying off my phone for three hours before bedtime and just read a physical book. Um, and I, I might try that tonight. I haven't um, decided yet. So none of us, uh, out of all three of us, none of us have any energy to speak of. We all move very, very slowly. We walk very, very slowly. And Luis is so funny. Uh, when he needs to climb into his bunk because he's on the top bunk and I'm on the bottom bunk, he stands at the ladder for a minute just trying to build up enough of a burst of energy that he can um, work up just to uh, climb up the ladder and hoist himself into his bed and just collapse in his bed. And uh, this video, making this video every day, because uh, I have to, I don't want it to just be about me. I want to say more than just my stats and how I feel every day. I want to add a little bit more information to it, make it more useful. Um, and it takes everything I've got every day to uh, make this video, to prep for this video. Um, and I honestly dread it. To be completely honest with you, I dread this. And so whenever I do the, um, the last day and then one day beyond after I've started the refeed, that will probably be my last one uh, for until I get back home and then I want to do some cooking videos and some other things like that at that point. Um, at this point I want to say uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to the people who have uh, reached out to me. We really, really appreciate our friends and family who have been calling us and connecting with us. So first I want to say thank you to Marlene for calling me this morning. We had a wonderful conversation. Thank you to um, uh, Amy for texting me today. And um, I saw just a minute ago that I have texts um, from uh, Jan and Cliff called me a while ago, and um, I'm losing daylight, so I asked him if I could call him back um, in a little bit after I am done uh, making this video. I want to call him back and finish our uh, chat. Thank you to, um, to um, Ellen for sending me uh, supportive messages, and um, it just means a lot to us. Uh, Sandy, thank you so much for your uh, communicating with me today um, for all of the positive comments I'm getting to these videos um, for people who say that this is helping them it's in, um, instructing them informing them on how uh, water fasting works 
and um, it's just really um, helpful because we really need support. When somebody is going through this, they need support from home, from loved ones. So I just wanted to tell all of y'all, thank you. Wanda, thank you so much. Wanda called me, Wanda Huberman. Um, we got cut off, sadly, because she was in a bad place in her uh, while she was driving. And she's going to call me a little bit later this evening, too, when she gets home and, and gets a chance. So we'll get to uh, touch base. And it's just very, very appreciated. Um, I really appreciate it. So um, a friend asked me um, to get a little bit more information about the constipation issue um, for her child. And so I passed along that question to Dr. Joanna this morning. And she said that fresh fruits, uh, whole fresh fruits, are the best way to aid in digestion. Veggies are good, but fresh fruits uh, are going to help more with uh, speeding up digestion, especially the high fiber fruits like mango, papaya, soursop, I think it's also called guanabana, um, pineapples, oranges, pears. Also, if you choose to use prunes, uh, like for a child, or you might even like this too, I'm going to try this, um, soak prunes in water for eight hours until they plump up real soft and then eat those before bedtime on a regular basis if you are struggling with um, a little bit of constipation. Um, also, um, I started reading one of the books that the doctors had on their bookshelf, and it is one I've been interested in finding. So they had a copy, so I, I've been looking at that. The Fasting Cure by Upton Sinclair. Have you ever heard of Upton Sinclair? Um, so I was really impressed with this book that I ended up buying it on Kindle after I started their copy because I wanted to highlight it. I wanted to mark in it while I was reading it. So um, I just downloaded the Kindle version for like three fifty, dollars and uh, in, I'm highlighting and reading it. And uh, so Upton, Upton Sinclair is actually most famous for his book called the Jungle. He wrote that in 1906, and in that book, he exposed the horrible, nasty, terrible conditions in the meatpacking industry, I think it was in Chicago, which caused a public uproar that ended up contributing in part to the passage a few months later of the 1906 Pure Food and Drug Act and the Meat Inspection Act. He ended up repeating the process in 1919. He published a book called The Brass Check, and it exposed the issues of yellow journalism in the United States and the limitations of the free press. Uh, four years after The Brass Check was released, the first Code of Ethics for Journalists was created. So he was very influential and in getting social change um, to happen in his lifetime. And Upton Sinclair was a firm believer in water fasting. He tells his backstory at the beginning of this book, The Fasting Cure, and he cites several books that had already been written on the subject 30 or 40 years before his book. And right now, I just want to share um, a quote of his, which was actually is my title of this um, video today, my screenshot of this video, and then I'm going to go ahead and get this video in the can because I am feeling pretty wiped out this afternoon. And so y'all already read it because it's the opening here, and it is this. It's difficult to get a man to understand something when his salary depends on him not understanding it. And I have thought about this concept for a very long time. And you probably have too, because we all have someone that we love, a family member or a dear friend, an old friend who has ended up making a lucrative career in one of the industries that we know are damaging to public health, their health and public health, damaging to animals that are involved in animal cruelty, 
or that are damaging to the environment. For example, big pharma, big sugar, meat and dairy industries, the packaged food industries, the restaurant industries, chain industries. Do you know somebody who's a, who has made a career in one of those areas? Do you think that you are going to be able to convince those people to change their diet to a healthy, whole food, plant-based diet and to renounce what they're currently doing when their salary, their very livelihood, depends on them remaining in what they're doing and putting on those horse blinders and, and not opening their minds to what you're trying to tell them. That's the way it is. I know I have people in my life whom I think of very, 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 very highly who are involved in the packaged food industry and in the meat and dairy industries. And if I could convince even one of them that they need to switch to whole food plant-based and renounce meat and dairy or um, renounce packaged foods because of how damaging they are, not only to them and their family, but to the rest of the world, then I would be the happiest woman in the world. I would just be 1,000%. I would feel 1,000% successful. Because it isn't, if you've lived your, if you have been living your life, and this is something that Marlene and I were talking about this morning, people are beginning to notice you. They're watching you silently. They're watching your progress silently. And they are seeing how far you go with this or are you going to fall off the wagon again and go back to the way you were, which is the way they are. And uh, as you progress through your journey of whole food plant-based, they're noticing the changes that you've made in your life and the upscaling, upregulating of your health, and it's making an impression. And they're going to start coming to you and say, now, what are you doing? Tell, tell me exactly what you're doing. And that's your window, not before, not to go up to them, but to wait till they see your silent, positive progress, your example, and then they'll come to you. And that's your moment. That's your window. That's your opportunity. And then you can start talking to them. But if they don't have a stake in any of those things I just mentioned or the other things around in this world that are harmful to animals, um, harmful to the environment, harmful to humans' bodies, then it's not as hard for them. But if they have a stake in those things, then it's very, very, very difficult for them to even consider. They're not going to. It's going to take a lot. So if you can get through, if I can get through to even one, and I have a goal to get through to at least one before I die, then I'll feel like a humongous success. So I'm going to keep plugging away at that by being positive, by continuing to improve my life, and try to make a difference. With those people who have the biggest stake in the switch, who would have the biggest risk to take in a switching to a nutrient-dense, plant-rich lifestyle and to renounce what they're currently doing because it's their career. So thank you, Upton Sinclair, for the quote. It really resonates with me. And I hope you guys will check out his book. I don't know why I'm getting so emotional. Let's blame this on the fast. No, I'm not going to blame it on the fast. Because I've been thinking about this for a long time with my friends whom I see deteriorating their health. And they're not considering their lifestyle as the reason. They're just sticking with their drugs. And that's all. And not making any other changes. 
Okay, you stop that. Anyway, let me show you my new shirt. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, see my new shirt? This is the Koki, uh, beloved, the most beloved animal of Puerto Rico. And um, he is the little brown frog that makes the little sound like a bob white, um, mostly at night. Anywhere there's just a little bit of greenery, you're going to find at least one Koki living in the greenery. And so at night, they're around here in this yard, and they're just like that, just like a Bob White. And um, there are other sounds, too, that kind of sometimes uh, drown out the uh, Koki. Lots of sounds around in this um, yard at night. It's really cool. Um, and like I said, I was up all night, so what I do is I get up. Last night, I got up at 1030, back up. I stayed, lay there for, not, for an hour and a half wasn't working. I got back up at 10.30, just went ahead and stepped outside with my phone and my earbuds and lay on the couch all night long. Slept maybe a little bit, but I don't, I don't think it was very much. I was just on my phone most of the time and uh, listening to the animals, the nighttime animals. Um, and, and it's a beautiful night. Ended up being very pleasant to do that. All right, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, have a great uh, day or evening, and please give this a thumbs up. I really don't understand how YouTube works, but apparently based on all the other YouTubers that I've watched, it does something with the algorithms. So would you please, right now, go ahead and click thumbs up, and subscribe, and share if you want to, and hit the notification bell. Okay? All right. Because I'm, I'm working my butt off to make these every day when I have no energy to be making these. So I'm trying my best to make these. So help a gal out, okay? Help a sister out here. All right. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to go call Cliff back. Waiting on one to call. Going to call my mom and talk to her for a little bit. And I uh, wish I could say go get some dinner, grab some dinner, but not going to say that. Not going to happen. Um, so anyway, all right, have a great one y'all and, uh, we'll talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.